Hello everybody, this is our video lesson for Tuesday, May the 19th. This is our last week of video lessons, our last week of school. Can you believe that? I feel like this has gone by so fast. So to start off our video lesson for today, we are going to start with a read aloud that's special for our last day or our last week of school. And it's a little similar to a read aloud we had earlier in the year. So let's take a look at it and see if we can think of what book it's similar or what book it's like that we've read earlier in the year. So this is the read aloud we are gonna listen to and read today. And it's called Last Day Blues. I can think of a book that we read earlier in the year and it was called First Day Jitters. Do you remember reading that with Mrs. Beth? I think you guys read it twice, but we all read it once together. So this is similar to First Day Jitters, but now it's the Last Day Blues. So I wonder if this is gonna be about the last day of school since our other book was about the first day of school. Let's see. Hi friends. Today we're going to be reading Last Day Blues by Julie Dannenberg, illustrated by Judy Love, and read to you by Jana's Bananas. On the Monday morning before the Friday that was the last day of school, Mrs. Hartwell took attendance. She sighed as she called out the last name. I'm going to miss all of you, she said. The kids nodded in agreement. I'm going to miss my friends, said Shannon. I'm going to miss Daisy, said Dan. I'm going to miss chocolate milk and pizza for lunch, said Joe. Everyone felt a little blue thinking about the last day of school, even Daisy. That afternoon during recess, the students talked as they hung out on the jungle gym. Mrs. Hartwell said she's going to miss us, said Alexandra, swinging from a bar. We should get a present to cheer her up, said Eddie, hanging upside down by his knees. But what could they get her? I could give her the rest of my sandwich. It's my mom's bologna special, said Josh, or a cup of coffee or a new pen, the kind with feathers and beads. The students thought and thought, but couldn't come up with one single idea that they all agreed on. We'll think of something tomorrow, Eddie assured everyone as they lined up at the drinking fountain. On the Tuesday before the Friday, that was the last day of school, Mrs. Hartwell read the final page of their last read aloud book. I'm going to miss circle time, said Mrs. Hartwell. I'm going to miss science, said Emily. I'm going to miss seeing Mrs. Hartwell wear her safety goggles during science, said Jack, giggling. And so before they got too sad, Mrs. Hartwell put on her safety goggles one last time, just for fun. We definitely need to cheer Mrs. Hartwell up, said Andy during recess as he jumped out of a swing. Any ideas about a present? Eddie asked. Nope, they all answered back. On the Wednesday before the Friday that was the last day of school, Mrs. Hartwell brought in her super duper sugar cookies with extra frosting. I'm going to miss snack time, but I can't wait for barbecues by the pool, said Jack. I'm going to miss recess, but I can't wait to play hide and seek outside after dinner, said Alexandra. I'll miss school, but I can't wait for summer vacation, said Josh. The class discussed their summer plans and drowned their last day blues with another round of milk and sugar cookies. 
I don't know whether to be happy or sad today, Andy said the minute they all arrived at the jungle gym. Mrs. Hartwell is sad, said Olivia. She probably doesn't want the year to end. While we're swimming, she'll be reading her old lesson plans, said Walker. And while we're playing, she'll be trying to remember the fun times we had this year, said Dan. And that's when an idea zipped, zapped, and zinged through Eddie's brain. I know exactly what will cheer her up, Eddie said, jumping down from the jungle gym. The class agreed it was perfect. On the Thursday before the Friday that was the last day of school, Eddie raised his hand right after Mrs. Hartwell started language arts. We need some privacy, please, he said. And so Mrs. Hartwell took down bulletin boards with her back to the class. She never even peeked. Well, only once. On the morning of the Friday, that was the Friday, that was the last day of school, the students dashed into the classroom. They snapped open the shades for the very last time. They did their chores for the very last time. They fed Daisy for the very last time. And as soon as the bell rang, they couldn't wait for Mrs. Hartwell to see her present for the very first time. The last day of school makes us so blue. We'll miss recess and pizza and reading too. We'll miss Daisy and cookies and friendship true. Snack time and science and learning new. We'll miss spelling bees for our test review and groundhogs that play peekaboo. The year's been great, a big wahoo. There are many things to miss, it's true. But mostly what we'll miss is you. Later on during recess, Eddie said, I think Mrs. Hartwell liked her present. I just hope it helps, Margaret said. Poor Mrs. Hartwell, they all said sadly as they pictured their final goodbye. Teachers must hate the last day of school. And then it was time, the bell rang. Goodbye, the students called as they rushed out the door. Goodbye, Mrs. Hartwell called after them. And then she returned to her empty classroom. It's just you and me, Daisy, she said. I'm sure going to miss them this summer. But I can't wait for vacation. The end. All right, now that we've watched our read aloud, you are going to write four sentences about what you miss about school. So that could be what you miss about being at school since we've been learning at home. It could be something you're going to miss since this is our last week of school. You're gonna write four complete sentences, that means capital letters and periods. Don't just write math, don't just write reading, don't just write going to recess. You need to tell me why you are going to miss it or why you already do miss it. Tell me what was fun about it. You need at least four sentences telling me what you miss about school. All right, so for our math this week, we are going to talk about some shapes. So we have some shapes right here, but these aren't just any shapes. They're not just like our squares or our triangles or our circles that we're used to. These are 3D shapes. And it says 3D shapes are fat, not flat. So a 3D shape means a three-dimensional shape. So that would be something, a shape that you could hold or that you would see sitting out in front of you. It wouldn't be a shape just like on a piece of paper. It would be something that you could actually feel and touch. 
if you have a square on a piece of paper, you can't feel that square. You can't feel the sides of the square. You can't feel the corners. You can just feel the paper that it's on. But if you had a cube, which is this shape right here, you can see it looks a little bit like a square, but it's got all these different sides and you can feel it. If you had a shape that was a cube, you would be able to feel that cube. So this says a cube, and here's our shape again, is like dice you drop. So if you have a dice, that would be an example of a cube. You can feel all the sides, you can feel the edges on a dice. That's an example of a cube. I have a box right here. And that is an example of a cube. I can feel the sides of it. I can feel the edges of my box. There's lots of different sides that I can feel. And it's got squares on each side. Each side is a square shape, but there's lots of different sides to it. So that makes it a cube. All right, let's look at some other shapes. So another 3D shape we have is a cone and it says a cone, which is right here, is like a party hat. So if you've been to a birthday party and they had those little hats that you put on your head and it kinda looks like a triangle, but not really, right? Cause it's not flat. That would be a cone. So a cone looks a little bit like a triangle. It's got that point on top and it's got a flat bottom but it's a little bit rounded, just like a party hat. So let's see if we can find some examples of cones. All right, so I couldn't find anything that was a cone in my house because I don't have any party hats. This is, I don't have a whole lot of these. I don't have a traffic cone, but we've seen these, right? We see them when there's a lot of construction, traffic cones. It's got a point at the top two slanted sides. It kind of looks like a triangle, but if you see a traffic cone, it goes all the way around, right? And it's got a flat bottom. It's not just flat on a piece of paper. We could actually touch and feel a traffic cone. So that would make it a 3D shape. Or an ice cream cone, and this one's upside down, the points at the bottom here, but it's got a point. It's got two sides. The bottom is a circle. Sometimes it could be a flat circle or just like the party hat. Maybe there's just a space for a circle. But when we have an ice cream cone, we can feel the whole thing, right? An ice cream cone's not flat. We put our whole hand around an ice cream cone. So that makes it a 3D shape. Here's another kind of hat. This is a little bit of a different cone. This is a little wider. Some more traffic cones, ice cream cones. So those are some examples of cones. Let's look at our next one, a sphere. This one's a little hard to say because we've got that S-P-H, which makes the f, s -f, s -f sound. Sphere. So maybe try practicing sphere a couple times. All right, here's our sphere. Now this looks a little bit like a circle, but remember 3D shapes are not flat. A circle would be flat. 3D shapes are round. It's something you can grab. So a sphere is round all the way around. It's not flat like a circle. This says a sphere is like a bouncing ball. So if you have a bouncy ball, that would be a sphere. I have a tennis ball right here. And you can see it looks a little bit like a circle, but it's round all the way around. It's not flat, I can grab it. This would be an example of a sphere. Here's some more spheres. So here's a basketball. That's an example of a sphere. If you have a basketball, you can hold it all the way around. It's not flat. It looks a little bit like a circle. 
a soccer ball. Remember in our classroom, we had a globe. It looks like the earth, a globe like we had by our bookshelves would be a sphere. A ball of yarn would be a sphere. Here's another tennis ball. This looks like maybe a ball we would play with at recess. Another basketball. There are lots of different things that could be spheres. Remember spheres, you can touch all the way around. They kind of look like a circle and they have no flat edges. There's nothing flat about a sphere. All right, let's look at another shape. Here is a prism. Prism. It's like this. And it looks a little bit like a rectangle, right? But just like that cube, it's got lots of different sides to it. And we know a prism is a 3D shape, which means it's something we could hold. And it says, or that we could touch. A prism is like a building tall. So a building would be an example of a prism, maybe a tall building, maybe like a big office building. It's got lots of stories. You could go and touch each side of that building. That would be a prism. All right, I have an example of a prism here. It's a box and on the front, it looks like a rectangle. On the side, it also looks like a rectangle, but I can touch all the sides. I can touch the top and the bottom. I can touch the front and the back. So that makes it a 3D shape. That makes it a prism instead of a rectangle. I can touch each and every side. So this would be an example of a prism. Let's see, we have a suitcase here. If you have a square or a prismic prism suitcase like that, kind of rectangular, you will be able to touch each of the sides. That would be a prism, a gift box. Lots of different things that could be prisms. Ooh, I see a juice box right here. We can touch all the sides on a juice box. All right, and lastly, we have a cylinder. Here is our cylinder. Maybe take a couple of seconds to practice that word too. Cylinder, cylinder. Right here is our cylinder. Okay, so this one's a little different. It looks like a circle might be on the top. It also is gonna have one of those on the bottom and the sides are completely round. And it says a cylinder is like a can of pop. So maybe you have a Coke can or Sprite, something like that, that would be a cylinder. The top is a circle, the bottom is a circle, but it's round on the sides and you can touch it all the way around. I have an example of a cylinder right here. Here's a container of salt. It's got a circle on the top, a circle on the bottom, and the sides are round. And I can touch the top, I can touch the bottom, I can touch the sides. So that would be an example of a cylinder. Let's see if we can look at some more. All right, so right here are some more examples of cylinders. If you have a battery, this looks like a double A battery. There's a circle on the top, circle on the bottom, and the sides are round. Again, we have a Coke can. This looks like maybe some hairspray, a candle, a big tall candle like that. Oh, here's a good one, a biscuit can, a tube of biscuit, circle on the side, circle on the other side. You can set it up so it'll be top and bottom. Sides are round. Ooh, and a Pringles can. And then here is just any kind of tin can. You could find if you have a soup can in your cabinet, that would be an example of a cylinder. So lots of different cylinders we can see. All right, so let's watch a short video and it's just gonna show us some of these 3D shapes that we just went over and let's see if you can recognize them. A 
I'm a 3D shape expert. You are the 3D shapes that I know. A sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a cone. Well, there's an extra one. There's an extra one. for the moon. And what are these examples of? Right here are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a sphere. Basketball, the earth, and marbles I have here are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a sphere. You are the 3D shapes that I know. A sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a cone. Oh, there's that extra one they threw in there. A soda can, a pencil shaped oh, in a can. What are these examples of? We just did it. Examples of a cylinder, as you can plainly see. A marker, a glass of milk, and a peanut butter jar are all examples of a cylinder. Yes, I'm sure they are. Here are the 3D shapes that I know. A sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a cone. An ice cube, a cardboard, these examples a Christmas of present what for shape? you are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a cube. My little dice, a sugar cube, and blocks that I use are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a cube. You are the 3D shapes that I know. A sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a cone. An ice cream cone, a pencil, what are these examples and a bag of get over these two. are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a cone. A birthday hat, a traffic cone, or a funnel in my home are all examples of a 3D shape that people call a cone. You are the 3D shapes that I know. A sphere, a cylinder, a cube, and a cone. All right, we're going to stop it there because we are not going to go over pyramids. All right, so you guys, for your math assignment, are going to find three examples of a sphere. A sphere. You can find three examples around your house. You can either take a picture of them or you can write down what they are and draw a picture of them. But three examples of a sphere. All right, I will see you guys for our next video lesson.